Do you love trophy bass? Well, you better show the bluegill some love. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Greg Grimes. I've been in the fishery management field for 25 years, and after working on thousands of clients' ponds, one thing trophy bass always have in common, that is, they need to have a lot of bluegill, and that means having the right habitat. Today, let's talk about, on the trophy bass management, let's talk about habitat. One of the most important things is protecting your forage base. People think about bass habitat, and that is important, but we want to really have as much food as we can for the bass, and that really means bluegill. So we need to protect those bluegill, we need to promote the bluegill so it's the most amount of bluegill we can have for the bass to eat. When we're talking about bluegill, we want to build up their numbers as high as we can. So first of all, maybe using a supplemental feeding program is one thing you want to consider. That's going to boost the bluegill numbers up tremendously. So again, what we want to have as many bluegills as we possibly can. So that means we need to have really good spawning habitat. A bluegill specifically will spawn multiple times throughout the summer months. Not in every individual species, but all bluegill will spawn throughout the entire summer. So a lot of energy is lost in building a nice bed for the eggs to get laid in. So they got a hard substrate, the gravel substrate, it's gonna save them a ton of energy that then can go into egg production, which results in more bluegill surviving, more bluegill thriving and growing up to then feed the bass. So what's important is getting those bluegill spawned at a high number and then protecting those bluegill. The way you protect those bluegill are jumbled up concrete, big rocks, fallen trees are great. Don't take the fallen tree out because it's providing a place for uh, the bluegill to hide in. If a beaver took down a tree for you, maybe we'll consider leaving that in there. We try to put a lot of this cover close to the bluegill bed so that we're maximizing the growth rates of those bluegill. One example is that it takes a hundred small little bluegill, one inch bluegill, to equal one four to five inch bluegill. So that energy that it goes into catching all those hundred little bluegill is gonna be vastly more than just eating the one larger one. In addition to any natural habitat or artificial habitat, there's some really great products on the market. Mossback in itself has three or four different lines of product. They have a safe haven, which means there's more limbs, so it's gonna provide more hiding places for the bluegill. They have a trophy tree. Root wad kits is what we do a lot of because we can, they're shorter, so we can put those in fairly shallow water close to the spawning habitat. They have actually have a spawning habitat, but so you can put pea gravel in that. So there's different mossback products. Another line that we carry, honey hole. They've got a honey hole grass, honey hole reed, and a honey hole brush. Those are shredded pieces of, lack of a better word, plastics. So they're gonna last forever. That's one of the big advantages of the artificial habitat. Like a Christmas tree is great, but it's only gonna last a year or two and just completely falls apart. So we can use artificial habitat to protect those fish. Then there's artificial habitats for bass as well. The trophy trees in particular, you can stack two of those up so you can cover a large part of the water column. One thing you wanna think about when it comes to bass habitat is break that lake into sections. So we have all the spawning habitat, we have hiding habitat, but we really wanna have travel. We wanna create a travel pattern to those bass to a loafing area, to an area where they can hang out. So you've got a hump, a ridge, a break, a channel, a ditch. You can connect those with some type of habitat that's gonna allow better bass growth. Grass is another habitat that's naturally occurring in some lakes. I didn't mention that, but we look at this specifically on grass. You want to have 10 to 20 percent of that lake in some type of cover. If it's barren, if you just have a little bit of structure against one shoreline or something at the end of the lake, that's not going to cut it. Again, put the lake into a grid pattern. Make sure you have some of that habitat throughout the entire water column. But then again, try to achieve a 10 to 20 percent coverage rate. All the research shows that. Once you get into 40% coverage, say for instance you've got uh, submerged grasses, which is also habitat, and it starts to take over and it gets a higher percentage, it's gonna provide too many places for the bluegill to hide in so the bass can't feed efficiently. So break that up, try to hit that 10 to 20% coverage area, then you're really starting to hit home with all your habitat features.